All right, let's get into KDA, it's tokenomics. I wanted to do some more research into this, get deeper, see what's really going on. Uh, I'm gonna go over what I like, what seems uh, bullish, and then there are some things later on I'm gonna get into that I don't like to see as much, but let's get right into this. So this is the uh, Cadena token allocation. You've probably seen this graph, it's all over the place. It shows the allocation of uh, the total. This is the total amount after all of the um, tokens are mined and everything. So 70% is allocated toward the miners, 20% goes to the platform reserve, 6% to investors, strategic partners, and 3% to the contributors. Now, so this was cool to see. Uh, this gives you the key stakeholder allocations, investors, contributors, and others. This was on coinless.co. I'm going to link all of the information that I've got in the uh, description, but these are just pieces that I found of a bunch of different articles I put together. This is not financial advice. Do not take my advice. Uh, this is this is cryptocurrency. This is super risky. This is a kind of low cap crypto, but if you're here, you're probably a fan of KDA and you know why uh, there's so many people bullish about KDA. It's an awesome project, but let's get into what this is saying here. So this is giving you the pre-sales for Cadena. There was a round one, there was a round two. Uh, round one was 4.5 million uh, coins at 50 cents. Round two was 17.2 million coins at 75 cents. And uh, then we had the coin list sale. There was coin list sale to non-US uh, customers and the KDA team, the Cadena team, seems like they've done a really great job of not putting KDA into that potential space of being a security. They've been very uh, conscious and aware of what's going on in that space. So here, this gives a brief summary of project major token milestones. Back in October 29th, 2019, we had the coinless registration begins. Uh, November 2019, coinless sale begins. The coinless sale ended the end of November 2019. Uh, back in 2019, Cadena transaction execution. But the important date here is February 1st, 2021, Coinless Global SAFT finishes vesting. So to my understanding, those coins that were initially sold, initially given to uh, investors and such, the SAFT rounds, those have already been unlocked and have been able to be sold back onto the market. So that sell pressure isn't something that we need to be worried about. If I'm wrong about this. Let me know if you know different information. You know, this is just information that I'm getting off of Google and these different articles. So, you know, do your own research in this space. But that is something that I like to see. One thing that's also floating around, one thing that people don't like about Cadena, I think this can be seen as a positive or a minus, depending on how you're looking at it, is it's extremely low gas fees. This uh, user on uh, posted this Reddit article and who's actually a fan of Cadena, but he was saying that if the gas fees are so low, there's no demand for customers to need to buy the token to use the network, where such as something like Ethereum has extremely high gas fees or even Bitcoin uh, has high fees as well. You have to have the token. It creates demand for the token. But uh, there's an article here on Cadena Research that talks about this and goes over it. And they stated here they built this model that the uh, release of the tokens will be over a 120 year period. And uh, they kind of said that it's almost a mix between BTC and ETH without its drawbacks. Um, but here the states, but gas fees are too low. To be blunt, the narrative that gas needs to be expensive, otherwise the coin is worthless, is Stockholm Syndrome. It's what the community tells itself instead of facing the reality ETH has and forever will fail to scale and that will fundamentally limit how much ETH can grow. It says, in my opinion, ETH's pretty close to maxed out growth-wise and ETH2 is still a nonsensical fantasy that the ETH holders from Genesis tell the masses to keep the price up. Um, this here is showing you the actual price of the transaction of the gas fee cost. Uh, this is current. So as there is more usage on the chains, it's possible these gas fees could go up a bit, but you're looking at 0. $0.0001 per transaction. Uh, it can be looked at as essentially, they've marketed as essentially free gas, no gas fees. 
So basically what part of this article is talking about is this idea that gas needs to be high to create demand for a token is kind of just a facade on almost the fault, the pitfalls of Bitcoin and Ethereum and where they messed up and that this isn't actually a good reason to create demand for a coin. And I think there is a big point to this where the value to the developer and the consumer is extremely high by having no gas fees because it's extremely easy and the path of resistance to use the chain and use the apps and to use the network is so cheap, then it's going to attract more developers and more users instead of like gouging the users to generate revenue for the stakeholders essentially is what's kind of going on in Ethereum right now or maybe or even in BTC uh, but especially in Ethereum where the gas fees are so high it's like it generates a lot of revenue uh, but it to me it really sucks for the user to use the network if you've used NFTs or DeFi to do anything to send it is extremely expensive because of the gas fees so this idea that we need high gas fees to dem create demand for the token I do believe there's a fallacy there I think that, but there is also this problem that what is creating demand for the token? I believe demand for the token will be created by great applications and great dApps and great services and tons of users on the network is going to bring value to the network and bring value to the holders. Um, part of that 20% platform uh, reserve token is also going to be going towards the community gas station grants. It says the most future tech service that platform reserve can offer is gas stations. Gas stations are accounts that re refund all gas utilized to ex execute specific smart contracts to users. When combined with PAC's ability for DAP developers, developers to co-sign transactions and pay for users' gas costs in using a DAP, we see gas stations as a powerful way for the platform to co cover many years of gas costs. So basically, this is giving the network the option and these dApps the option to essentially cover all the gas costs for the users and the developers for some foreseeable future, um, which seems great for the ecosystem. But also, I, I see there is a cost, and we're going to get into that in a second with the inflation of the token. I like this was cool. I just watched a video. I'm going to link it in my description. I hope Ryan Mata doesn't mind that I uh, that I snagged this from him. Shout out to him uh, and his uh, page because I did use this from him. But I like what he created here to show the differences or, or to compare the inflation of Bitcoin and Kadena from its birth period, birth the birth date of Kadena is 2019, and this is showing you how much. Uh, Kadena is going to be in uh, in circulation at what age of the blockchain. So right now with Bitcoin, we're at about age 10. We're, it says here we're at 81% of the coins have been mined and are in circulation where Kadena is still very young and they slowed down that process of mining and the releasing and putting coins into circulation. Now, one problem I see though is that I see this Partial as a plus, I also see this as a minus though, because it's going to continue to, there's going to continue to be high inflation. There's con going to continue to be a large supply and a large amount of tokens that haven't gone into circulation. Uh, I think that it's not good for the ecosystem that by age 31, Bitcoin will have 99% of its coins in circulation, but that also probably means that the supply is going to be very low or that the inflation is going to be very low by then or it's going to take Kadena a long time to uh, reach that point of getting its supply out there and not having uh, such a high inflation. Now, I could be wrong. Let me know what you guys think if I'm missing something here, but I really did like this um, this chart that Ryan made and he did an awesome video on the tokenomics. I'll put it in the description as well. I just watched it. I really liked it. And he covers a bunch of stuff that I don't go over. This here, I'm gonna what I'm gonna cover here is an update. This it's an older update, but it is this is a really important thing I think to look at. And unfortunately it looks not too great for the uh, inflation and the supply of Kadena over the near future and somewhat distant future. This was back in January 29th, 2021. This is from Will Martino. He's one of the co-founders of Kadena. 
Uh, but these were some slides that I pulled from this article. I'll link it in the page. But anyways, this is showing you the mining emissions uh, from now until 2040. So this is the rate at which uh, the token is being mined and the number of tokens that are being uh, that are going to be out in circulation at which date. So this is a really important uh, part of this. It says that mining launch November 2019, 2.18 million tokens per month are going to be mined. Back in January 2021, 1.94 million tokens per month are going to be mined. And in five years, January 2025, 1.69 million tokens per month are going to be mined. So there will be a slight decrease in the amount of tokens that are mined per month over the coming years, but it does seem to be quite high. Now, this is just a number. We, we really should be looking in terms of percentages. And it says here, this decade continues over a period that lasts over 100 years. So while Kadena's total emission of 1 billion tokens sounds like a lot, it's more important to focus on the total emission rate to grasp how the economy really functions in terms that are relevant to today. Here's what mining based growth looked like from now until 2040. So this was the original emission rate. So there's two, Kadena has two different forms of token emissions. One is from the Genesis, Genesis platform emission and the other is from the mining emission. So originally this, these Genesis platform emissions were going to stop at 2025 here at 400 million. You know, if you look at this inflation rate, I don't like this per se. Uh, I could be missing something here. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know what you guys think about this. But uh, you know, we have our mining emissions and we have our uh, platform emissions. This is both inflation. This is both supply of the token increasing. So now they recently adjusted this, or this was back in the beginning of last year, they adjusted this and they extended the period at which the emissions uh, platform can uh, will will stop will will end basically so instead of it ending in 2025 it's now ending at 2030 at half a billion tokens so at 2030 we should have half of our supply of our, the total 1 billion kda tokens in circulation uh, that's eight years from now to have half of the the tokens out there that is actually relatively slow growth when you look at it right now we're at about 200 million so it's another 300 million tokens um that means our our uh, you know we'll go up by a little over 100 percent in the next eight years um so if you think the supply the demand is going to more than double actually there should be a growth in the price i'm pretty sure we all think that's going to happen and Part of what's so great about right now is that we're in some bargain basement prices in the crypto space. We're in a bear market. And if you pick the right projects right now, there are huge upside. And I think Kadena could be one of those. So let's keep getting into this. But this is just something that uh, is interesting to see. A million coins in circulation. So if we're, if we're, um, if the same amount of tokens are coming out, then that actually percentage should be quite a bit lower, but the inflation is quite high for Kadena. Unfortunately, uh, it says the platform emission decreases from 48 million tokens per year to 2020, 22.8 million tokens per year. That was based on this uh, change in the emissions rate and extending it out to 2030. However, having said all this with the inflation rate and what's going on, um, there's all these other things about Kadena that are awesome. The scalability, the uh, security, the contract language. But what is, um, what I am very bullish about Kadena, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe this isn't a good reason to be zero bullish, but we're at $1.60 right now per Kadena, per KDA. Uh, our our all-time high was $27.00. So basically, if you believe KDA is going to survive and make it, uh, we have a ton of upside of KDA. There's a pretty strong support, it seems like, at around the $1.50 range. I don't believe we really came much below. I think maybe went down to like $1.20 during the Celsius uh, debacle and crash when that was kind of the lowest point of this bear market so far. We've come back up a bit. We had a short little rally up above $2. Um, and, you know, basically... We, we need quite a bit of demand for Kadena because there is quite a bit of inflation. Um, but as Kadena goes down in value, if it gets below a certain point, it is possible miners will turn off their rigs because the cost of mining becomes more expensive than the 
uh, value of the coin itself, which could decrease emissions a little bit. Basically, you know, I'm still bullish on KDA. I'm uh, not putting my entire portfolio into KDA, but I think that it is one of these tokens that have an immense amount of upside with limited downside. Um, so besides the, the some of the concerns with the inflation and such, overall, I'm still bullish on KDA, but it is just good to know this looking in. And I think this is kind of thing. We still are super, super early with KDA. And based on the inflation, we're super, super early. Uh, it, it just you know, five years from now, the tokenomics are going to be getting even better for KDA. Uh, and it seems like basically 2030, those emissions are going to stop. That is going to decrease the supply of KDA immensely. So if you're real, real long term, uh, that's going to be an important date. If you like this, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Leave some comments. Help out the channel. Send it to your friends. I appreciate it. All right, let's keep going. Phew!